Good day, Lord and and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity with me, Cornish Knight. As we get on at task at hand, delving ever deeper into the into the dungeons beneath Cad Noir. But before we do that, let's just check to see how long we've got left. Under 24 hours before they turn up. Right. Do you want to manually resolve? Yeah, let's manually resolve. You must travel to Cad Noir to participate in defence. Okay, fine. Um, we need to talk to this chap. Here, to Durant, talk to him about what you've seen. Your face is full of need, Durant snorts. It looks to burst, does not speak. If you do not speak, I have questions I want to ask you. If doubts and curiosity plague you, you're skinning your knuckles on the wrong door. I saw something strange. You were sitting by the fire, and I saw a great light from your staff, you declare. Tell me what you saw. Durant is, Durant is silent. He stares at you, lock locking gazes. It was a flash like an explosion of rust of air, incredible bl incredibly blight, bright, you declare. It is the light of the god hammer you saw. Durant takes in each word. He is strangely silent for a moment, and when he speaks his voice is low. The, gob ha the god hammer, what about it? It was a weapon of Deerwood's people. A symbol of their independence. It saved the Deerwood. What do you know about it? It brought the Saints' War to an end, knocked a god from his perch. There are few that would deny Aeothis overstepped. The God Hammer reminded Aeothis of it. You saw its light because I helped shape it, give it life, and release it into the world. Once seen, its glory is almost too bright to be believed, and too bright to be forgotten. To help build the God Hammer? There were twelve of us. We fashioned the weapon, drafted plans for it, prayed for guidance at Ashfall, and it came to me there. Each of us were given a staff made from the forest of black trees around us, glowing with embers and fire far greater than this branch you see now. It felt as if the staff was Margren's own finger, guiding my hand, guiding the other eleven. The shadows of the Twelve who had come to stand on the bridge to stop Aethys. A shadow of the Twelve. I also saw, I also saw a dozen bright circles emerging from your staff as well. Uh, shadow of the Twelve. Let's go with that one. Even in that stand, there was a ritual to it. For the Twelve that stood on the bridge, there were a dozen shadows cast, a dozen faithful of Margrin. Fiercest supporters and shapers of the God Hammer. Durant rests his staff in front of him, the flame atop it curls for a moment. The light flaring slightly, it splits into a ring of flames, one after another until a dozen is met. As twelve held Aethys fast, we twelve unleashed our prayers and let the God Hammer fall. Then it blossoms brightly once and resumes its candle intensity. In the aftermath, the shadows seem to say sharper, seem sharper in vicinity, as if they have an edge. You think you blink to clear your vision. Durin is still staring at the tiny candle-like flame intently. Shadows cast by the fire of the God Hammer, perhaps. They shared their fate as well in time. Now the spine of the Deerwood is marked by the God Hammer, marked. By Margaret. Durant's frown and moves his gaze from his staff. What do you what do you mean said the same fair fates? Not all deaths come with stilled breath and stilled heart, or other stilled passions beneath the waste. Some deaths come from silence. The connection we once shared with Margaret, after the light of the God Hammer, it was not the same. It was as if we'd lost our senses, and sense of purpose as well. Instead of victory, being welcomed, there was silence, within and without. Not many can claim to have killed a god. It is less a heroic tale than you would think. And such a death, it changed our faith. All faiths, I expect. Doubt followed, and the world changed. I do not believe Margren was pleased by what we had done. Durant returns his gaze to the dead tip of his staff. 
Why is that, you inquire? The world is broken. The wheel stilled. There is sickness in the world's heart. Perhaps the price of crossing a god. Crossing two gods. Even as Margren shaped our hands, perhaps we carried her will farther than was allowed. Just as Widewind did. Saint Widewind. Mortal arrogance to match mortal arrogance. Yet if the world had changed, then I sought to change with it. If I had forgotten some of Margren's teachings, I would find them again. I would make her see me again. What did you do? I remembered Margren's teachings. How reminders on the flesh were more important than the death of a vessel. And I wondered if killing Aethys, if that had simply set him free, had it allowed him to escape his punishment and be taken on the wheel like a mortal? Durance's voice takes an odd turn for once. He feels like he's generally asking a question like a mortal. He shakes his head. As I stepped from the now blessed God Hammer Bridge, I thought of Ashfall. I thought of the War of Black Trees. Wondered if I needed to be burned to find myself again. That is Margaret at her heart. At least that is my hope. These are the doubts that befall me. What happened when you returned to Ashfall? The road to Ashfall is long. Gives one time to think. If you think long enough, you do not go home. I left without telling anyone, with only the robes I wore at Halgot, my staff, and my name, which is long buried. Of my fellow eleven craftsmen, disciples, I know not what happened to them, if they suffered the same doubt as I did. But it was underserved. It was wrong. We had done all that. All had asked. Grab victory from defeat and, and... You feel as if your god had betrayed you. Do you feel as if you betrayed your god? You feel as if your god betrayed you. There is something about being used and cast aside. Perhaps Widewen himself felt it. There at the end, when the hammer struck. To be the proof that your god is hollow as the vessel it inhabits. I tried to find purpose, and avoided all contact with other Magranic priests, did not seek the walls of Ashfall, and sought to make amends to my god through actions. I joined with the Purges for a time, and not long after came the first signs of the Hollowborn. So many crimes, trespasses, violations, the salvation. Animancers were another sickness born of the Saints' War. A relapse of innovation, of desperation to heal what we had caused. All seemed worse than before the bridge, not better. And as years passed, the world became even worse still for the victory. Maybe the purchase weren't what... Maybe the purchase weren't what Magrin wanted either. Now I see why you call your goddess a whore. You see jilted you and you still pine for her. You committed atrocities and your god has sought you out for exactly what you deserve. Doesn't sound like your goddess will ever forgive you. It would seem that Magrin's silence is your trial. Let's go with that one. Now I see why your god, you call your goddess a whore. She jilted you and you still pine for her. Sweat collects on Sweat collects in the soot of his crease of his forehead and runs down his ruby cheeks. It drips from the tip of his nose. His mouth moves, but his utterances make no sound. He is, for, for once, at a loss, feeling your gaze. He quickly composes himself, wiping his forehead with the back of his dirty hand. Hmm? Worship the whims of some fickle bitch, and you'll never be more than dirt beneath her feet. Worship what she worships, on the other hand. Take her fire for your own, and her esteem comes on its own. Of course, by that time you no longer need it. Trial and transformation, sure as Durance taught. Durance glares at you and stares into your eyes. Staring into your eyes gives you the feeling of peering over the edge of a great cliff. You think to put the coals to my feet, 
but what's burned once will never burn again. These talks are your trial, Walter. You cannot deflect the truth to one who has already been purified by it. Tell me what happened on the bridge. Uh, maybe let's, let's, let's get out of this for a second. And then we can talk what? to him. Maybe can we get back yet? I want to want to ask you something. If doubts and curiosity plague you, you're skinning your knuckles on the wrong door. I want to know know more about you. Asphalt. Ah, oh, Dagnabbit. I should have asked about the bridge. Hmm? Uh. If doubts and curiosity plague you. Hmm? I wish there's a way to go back rather than have to exit. If doubts and curiosity plague you, you're skinning your knuckles on the wrong door. She's trying to do there were twelve of us. It felt as if the staff was Margaret's own finger. Okay, so we can go for that. The other okay, so we can go Just that way the then. That's good to know. I need to talk to these guys some more as well, because they all have their own stories to tell. Alright, she's got the best stealth. Ready, watcher. Sure. Alright, so there's a couple of them. And another worm. Okay. Just say the word. Nice and quiet. Everyone get in position. Yeah, there we go. Therefore, the cloak. Suit the worm. Hit him. Hit that one. You go for the worm as well. Following your right. Get that one. The rest of you target that worm. Okay. You go for that one. Knock that one on the floor. Shoot that one. Uh, no need to pop that just yet. No need to pop any of his bigger spells. That on the other hand hurt. Okay. Yeah, on. The reason I don't use a lot of my like spells and stuff yet is the fact that I don't want to really have to sleep. Right, okay. Let me kill that stuff off. Leave it to me. I do think this not a flaw of the game, but it's a shortcoming, which is that on the normal difficulty you really don't yeah. use a lot of your like spells and stuff unless you're fighting in big fights which I suppose is understandable considering um, considering how it works in like D&D &D and stuff where well, you don't use your big spells unless you actually really have to oh boy that's a lot Orc trip, orc trip high priest. Stepping into this chamber, you are, you are assaulted by cacophony of screeches, growls, and barks. Blood spattered orc trip dance to the in frantic leaping motions. To one side, an orc trip plunges his hand into a bucket, teeming of blood to dab patterns onto others eager to join in the rites. At the far end of the room, one orc trip wearing a long skull of a young drake and vibrant feathers sakes a staff towards the gathered orc trip, screeching and clicking. The high priest suddenly raises his staff above his head, shrieking with renewed vigour. He sway he swings his staff downward to a point at the pit, then at you. I think we've just been invited to participate. So he wants us to be chucked in the pit, I take it. And there's a lot of them. 
Right, fall back into this room. Right. Don't let them get past. Um, switch over to your sword. Get there. You get there. You get there. You get there. You get there. Right. Mr. Wizard Boy, it's your turn to sign. Get that up. Um, create a large zone of divine shelter, granting defense to, to bonus to all allies. What are you doing over there, laddie? Right. Target that one. Got that down. Now that's down. We can chuck fireball. You do this. Watcher speaks directly to the souls. Yeah. What else do we need? He's got that up, which is giving us bonus protection. Right, he's got his chant going. Oh, she's taking a pounding. Right. Ah, that's nasty. Right, he's got that popped. No. Let's try and get... We want something... That should do. Keep shooting that one. He just fired off a fireball, so we can do that. You take that and smack him off his feet. You go and... Go and attack this one up here. Once that's along the way, he's only got one chant up. Okay, it's not great. Fight it off again. Hobble him. Right, you're going for the dragon. Just straight up carve into him. If they always focus on the high priest. Come on. Come on. Probably a good time to pop your endurance re regen. Right, so we wiped that one out. Turn back. Lost spirits. There is only death upon the endless path. That wasn't strange at all. Just say the word. Problem is, if we jump down this hole, I don't think we'll be able to get back up. Just say the word. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's more dragon stuff here. Bucket is filled with blood and you give off an arc stents. You recognize it as Mokra's tears, a powerful poison. The blood spilled from the bliss bucket seems to have eaten into the stone. The rope tied to the bucket looks long enough to descend into the pit. Just say the word. That's not creepy at all. How long have we got left? 14 hours. Uh, Uh, 
there's a sacrificial pit. If we take the stairs, do we just keep going down? End this path for Odnua level 3. That's the way that leads up. It's pitch black down here. Yeah, more... more stuff. Oh, worn out by time, many of these alcohols are engraved with Adrian sur Adrian's surnames. Word. I had a feeling that was one there. Right, so we've got uh, just robes and other stuff. Ready, watcher. Center ahead of check. Great. Now we have to run. Just say right, because we got that thing coming for us. And that's an ogre, isn't it? Yeah. Well, this is going to be fun. The word. You right. Now it's on the ground. Hit it with everything you got. Killed an ogre. Ogre blood. I don't think we've met an ogre before. Ogres, there we go. Ogres are large, thick-skinned creatures standing between 10 and 12 foot tall. They are heavily muscled and typically attired in furs or skins. Their prey clubs, axes and maces of bone or wood are their preferred weapons. All ogres are intelligent, often more so than civilized races, but their overwhelming hostility towards even their own species keeps their numbers low. Despite their natural intelligence, their volatile, volatile tempers have historically, historically prevented them from concentrating long enough to create anything significant cultural value. Most live semi-nomadic, secluded lives in the wilderness, though they are less likely to encounter others. Only, the only time they are alive to come together is during mating season, which often does almost as much to reduce their numbers as it does to replenish them. Ogres with a more peaceful streak take particular pains to avoid contact. On rare occasions that ogres are found working together, they are almost always directly operating under the direction of an ogre matron. Ogre matrons are even larger than the male ogres, but tend to be less aggressive towards their own kind. These ogres have banded together, they have often represented an insurmountable threat to other kith. So, level 6 enemy. Damage distance and corrode. Yeah. That's worrisome. Yeah. Oh, there's two of them. This is bad. Okay. Okay, we fell down. That's not great. Target that one. Suit it. Suit it. 
shoot it. It's still standing, that's going to be a pain. Mark it. Smack it off its feet again to keep it pinned. Uh, okay, that's bad. It's still up. Okay. Come on. Everyone focus on the other one. Dogs seem to be of unique breed. If only we could speak to them. Just say the word. Uh, you unique breed my backside. Just say the I'm word. Kicking my ass from one side of this place to the other. So what do we make using this stuff? There's a whole host of stuff I just never get around to using. So, what, like, for example, so it's, it's interested in them. We've got a whole host of stuff. Chan, I mean, do could we use it for something particular? Uh, slaying. Wilder, yeah, ogre blood, that's what we use it for. Fought as much. Yeah. I mean, could we enhance this? That might be useful, actually. We've got enough blood to do it. Yeah. Against ogres, that would be very useful. There we go. So there's Just flaming the damage, there's more gr damage against wilder creatures. I can't see anything because of all this darkness. Uh, 18 hours until we need to go back up top. And there's more of these guys. Okay, you're going to have to punch this one on your own. Punch it. Punch it. Mark it. You can eat its face off. You can't win. Uh, great. There's two of them. And there's going to be a third one floating about here somewhere as well, which sucks. I'll slash that one up. Ouch, that hurts. Durant's popular ability now. I'm here. The rest focus on you. You try and knock that one down. Right, so that knocked her down. Yeah. Right, let's fight this one then. 
Just say the word. I'm doing it the old fashioned way because I haven't had a chance to restun any of my or to regen any of my abilities. So everyone just smacking him. Come on. That's the third one down. These guys are nasty. Right. Light, flame, and sound. Yeah. Flies swarm around this decaying orc head, roving over its dead eyes and slack jaw. Leave it to me. So they're killing their own kind. Yeah, that's that's not nice. Just right. say the word. Okay. I can see two in here. Any in here? This wooden scaffold has rotted away, crumbling and leave its own weight around it. The signs of an excavation, evidence of abandoned, abandoned, being abandoned long ago. Okay. The Endless Path, level 1. Oh, so this is a shortcut to level 1, is it? Hmm. Interesting. At least we know it's a way out. Right, let's finish off these remaining ogres. Because there's the throne room and stuff as well. Right, let's go. How may I help? I've only got so many spells left. Just say the word. Ready? Yeah, there we go. Knew that was going to happen. Go and knock that one on his ass. And right. Durance, get up there. You mark one of these ones. You attack him. Focus fire on him and you can keep him pinned. Let me guess, our knowledge of them went up. 100%, yeah. Smack it again with the sword to stop it from winding up its attack. Whew. Man, these guys are Leave ugly. It to me. More shrines. These massive bones have been picked clean and have cracked to access the marrow beneath, beneath all bear the mark of teeth. There's more of them. Of course, there's more of them. Okay. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. Um, fireball it is. Please knock him off your feet. Oh, that's a druid. Okay. Oh, this is bad. Um, do that ability. Do 
do that ability. Right, slaughter this one. Uh, the companion went down. That's not good. Durance, pop your ability there. Slash him up. Ah, he's got some kind of shield up. Uh, pop this up. That's good. No, that would generate a, a hit of retaliation against him. Can you please knock him off your feet? feet? Right, as he's off his feet, everyone... Ah, oh, man, that's bad. Come on. Come on, you can do it, dude. Just say the word. Got that stupid. Ah, Durant is down. We killed the druid. Ah, but man, that was a nasty fight. Really nasty fight. Just say the word. Durant is up, but he's got a bad sprain. Just say the word. And his health is almost out. Just say the word. And that's not the last of them, is it? Uh, probably not. Can do. Oh boy, this is bad. We may have to retreat. Because it was a druid, and there's probably still others down here. Well, let's quickly read one of our books. Because we've got a lot of books to go through. Blacksmith Knights, a sort of history of the Knights of the Crucible. If the blacksmith fails, the armor fails, if the armor fails, so to falls. All all run soul hold, the first guild grand, guild master of the Knights of the Crucible. The Knights of the Crucible have have one of the most fascinating and rich histories in all of Eora. Currently holding a position as as an incredibly influential group in the Deerwood, they come from humble beginnings. There may not be a single person in all Deerwood, Deerwood who knows exactly how much they owe to the Knights. The group has existed for years, long before they even came to be known as Knights. They started as a group of blacksmiths led by Alvaron Silhold, who came together to form a guild. Alvaron felt it imperative for the members to unify, sharing their knowledge through the guild, in order to keep the skills and techniques they had spent their lives perfecting. He called the guild the Crucible, insist insisting that for their works were used for destruction, they should always be reminded, remembered as creators. They would be known as the vessel that would stood the fire to deliver a new form into the world. Forged in the fire, and all the stronger for the tribulation. Alrun, being a veteran of many battles, knew the importance of implacably made armour and weaponry. He also espoused the necessity for members of the guild to be trained in martial combat. The only true way to make a proper suit of armour is to be the one who must wear it. Alrun led the guild for years, in instituting a policy that many men who wanted to join, of any man who wanted to join, must not only be a skilled blacksmith but also take the time to learn how to hold himself in battle. He a added a training ground to the guild hall, and there was scarcely a minute of daylight that didn't see a member out on the field holding their fighting techniques. Because of this, the guild earned the nickname the Knights of the Crucible. They became a de they became the de facto militia for the Deerwood, an honourable group that many turned to for help. They were known to be a fair, ethical, and quick to respond. The knights chose the knights chose Aidon, Aidon as their patron, dedicating their works to his name. To honour him, they incorporated his symbol into their own and wore it 
wore it on their arm, and many of the knights took their dishonor further, regardless of what martial material a suit of armor was made from. Something on the right arm was made with iron, celebrating Iden's monarch, moniker, the Iron Arm. Both of those traditions are followed by some of the knights to this day. The knights' smith skill led them to be known throughout the land as the premier artisans of their craft, leading people to call an item of exquisite, exquisite quality of the crucible. Their training and dedication truly came into play during the War of Defiance, locally known as Hadret's Rebellion. Hadret's Rebellion, all run knowing the importance of winning this war, sent out a call. All able bodied knights were to join the militia. They quickly proved invul invaluable to the cause and helped turn the tide of the rebellion. This was particularly true in the Battle of the Defiance Bay. Admurf had already been lost in the previous battle, and moral. Adam had already lost the previous battle, and morale for the Dewoodian militia was failing. With the help of the Glanfafen astrologers, the knights were able to rout the imperial forces and secure victory for the Deerwood. The new duke, grateful for the help and, know, and knowing that without the knights, the Deerwood never would be never would have survived, made a decree: the knights would thenceforth be welcomed into the duke's castle and become his official royal guard. In recent years, the crucible aspect has fallen to the wayside in favour of knight. The requirement that the members be proficient in both smithing and martial combat has has loosened to the point that anyone who applies is guaranteed entry, even if it po even if they possess little to no smithing experience. This is an allegation that is vehemently denied by the knights. Interesting. So they've become less of a practical order and more of an actual survivalic order then. But that's for next time, folks. I've been Cornish Knight. If you have liked, please press the like button. If you wish to subscribe, please press the subscription button. You can follow me on Twitter, you can follow me on Steam, or you can leave a comment in the comment section and I'll get back in contact with you. I've been Cornish Knight. This has been Pillars of Eternity, and I shall see you all next time. Goodbye.